Good morning, good noon, good evening. Whatever time and place you're listening to us from, straight from the 909, it's Mark, Andre, myself, Isaiah, and together, that's That's hip hop. We know you might have tuned into us because of the album we're covering today, but if you love hip hop and you're about it, join us on this journey and subscribe and follow us as we go album by album and dissect the science behind these lyrical masters. With each episode, you'll get us talking about the MC, the impact of the album, our thoughts on the artwork, our top three tracks, dissecting the lyrics and breaking down the style, all with this fun, laid-back comedic chemistry between three MCs who just so happen to be friends in real life. So we humbly ask, if you've enjoyed our content, please support us by dropping us a sub. Drop a sub on us, yo. And a like. And a, like. <laughs> and a comment. <laughs> engage. And follow us on it. Yeah, and engage and recommend. <laughs> and share. It just becomes this big social media pyramid scheme. Make sure you get Fry Friends Have to subscribe to friends. us. Right. And then we'll give you a you know, shout out. Shout outs. Uh, the, the most people you add to our group will you know, yeah, donate. That'll build right. your first leg. And then of subscriptions, you need two legs to be a diamond hip hop. That's hip hop member. Yeah. Three legs <laughs> total, then you can get one of the books <laughs> off of our shelf here. Yeah, not a pyramid scheme. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're discussing a very talented young, belated singer, rapper, producer who came up in the game from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> if you, when you first saw him, you might have thought, you know, he's just another slim shady wannabe rapper, but you'd be extremely wrong. He has to be one of the most transparent, genuine, purest souls to ever grace the mic. His music can sound freestyled, psychedelic, and abstract, and it has that free spirit to it. It's, it's loose. It's not crowded by thought. Um, but m- more than that, it, it, it has a feel. There is a trouble side, a dark side, to the introspective demons he faces personally, but there is also a good side, a free side, eager for life and all it has to offer. We're talking about the one of the purest all-around artists to ever do it. That's Mr. Mac Miller. Yes. We're diving into uh, watching movies with the sound off. Released June 18th, 2013 by Ross, Rostrum Records. It has, it's a second studio album recorded at the new ID Labs in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, South Beach Studios in Miami, Florida, Paramount Recording Studios in Hollywood, Mac Miller's Tour Bus, Rap Camp, Flying Lotus's Crib, Space. and The Sanctuary, <clears throat> located in Mac Miller's place. Production was done by Mac Miller, who goes by the pseudonym Larry Fisherman, The Alchemist, Jay Hill, Chuck English, Diplo, Earl Sweatshirt, uh, Clams Casino. Oh, man. Uh, we got... Uh, ID Labs, Tyler, the creator, um, Adu, the God, Flying Lotus, and Pharrell Williams with Benji uh, Grindberg serving as the executive producer. It features guest appearances by Action Bronson, Schoolboy Q, Absol, J Electronica, uh, Nikki Randa, <clears throat> Loaded Lux, Vinny Rat, uh, Radio, Tyler, the creator, and Earl Sweatshirt. The album peaked at number three on the Billboard 200. Number one on the independent albums chart, number three on the uh, top R&B hip hop albums chart, and number three on the top rap albums chart, selling over 102,000 copies in its first week of sales. Andre, you recommended this album for our listening today, and what about it makes uh, it like a true <clears throat> classic to you? Well, it's amazing because it, it was just kind of on my mind. Uh, we haven't covered Mac Miller, and Mac Miller is kind of I feel like a lot of people know who he is and, and we have a lot of love for him. So uh, I just decided to pick this one because I, I felt like we all didn't have the time to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and when I first picked up on Mac Miller, I was, you know, early on, man, you know, Anthony Fantano, I used to watch him a lot and he brought up the blue slide album, the blue slide park album. And I listened to it and I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. I just didn't like it. It didn't fit me. It didn't, it didn't really vibe with me. So that was kind of it. I didn't listen to him after that. I just kept it moving. So after doing lyricology, I just would get Mac Miller more than I thought I would. And I had to go back and like figure out what they were talking about. Um, so I, I, I didn't do this on my own. I was just kind of browsing through, just listening to random albums. And I happened to hit the uh, um, SDS and it was on random. I was just on title listening and streaming and SDS came on and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Yo. And I was like, this is Mac Miller. Cause I didn't, I didn't look at who was, who it was. I just was listening going crazy. Like I couldn't believe it. 
And I was like, this is Flying Lotus. Hold up. Mm. And then that's Mac Miller. I didn't know they worked together. So I jumped back and uh, there was Mac Adelic, which was really impressive. But I immediately went to this one. And when I listened to it, I had an experience I wasn't ready for because I, I had kind of a doubt for Mac Miller. So when I listened to it, it really showed me, oh, my God, I missed something. He's very, very technically impressive. His production wise, he knows exactly where he wants to go. So right then and there, everything surrounding this album to me feels like uh, your moment to really get to understand him as an artist. All the stuff before is like he was rapping, but he wasn't fully developed in his artistry. This to me felt like a breakthrough. It just was like this moment and he got through, but it's his second album. So all the time, I always think of the second album. The second album is always going to get you further. So just the reason I picked this one, I felt like to have that Mac Miller conversation, let's talk about his pen. His pen is crazy on this album. The production on this is crazy. So this really would set off anybody that hated on Mac mm -hmm. Miller. This is your opportunity to like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this well, is the one. What about uh, you, Mark? What was... Uh when was your first time even hearing of Mac Miller? And then like, how, how has he, has he been an influence to you or has he been someone from afar that you, this is going to be my first instance listening to him. Um, I was really, uh, I was really not interested in listening to Mac Miller at the time. Cause around that time we're dealing with an influx mm -hmm. of the, uh, of the white rapper. Okay. And it was just, it, all of them felt really campy. You know, your Asher Roth, your Macklemore, yeah. and then Mac Miller comes along with almost same sounds the same as Macklemore. And it's like, nope, I'm I'm not gonna be listening to any of this crap right now. Uh now, respectfully speaking, on <clears throat> listening to this album, I come in with an open mind. And that's hip hop actually. Uh I wanna thank you guys because now I'm in a position where I have to listen to albums I haven't listened to before. And I have this, I have this closed off mind to what I feel is good hip hop music. Of course, that leaves me confined to this, to this space. But outside of that, I end up figuring out, Hey, look, there's actually with an open mind, you'd end up learning a lot more about, about the guys that you like influence these other guys. Yeah. So, with that being said, listening to this album, there's a lot I could take from Mac Miller. There's a lot I could take from his style lyrically. I do have some critiques on some things, but I'll make sure to bring it up later in the uh, in when we're able to explain this uh, a couple of these tracks because a couple of these tracks that we do mention are going to be uh, key examples of it. But listening to him, listening to him here was a real treat because. He's really, really good lyrically. It's it's actually surprising. Yeah. You look at you look at Homeboy right here on his album cover. It this the, the, the you have the idea that this is not even a rap album. Like right. that guy could spit. <laughs> I'm glad we're in a phase now where we can actually look at everybody and be like, okay, what's his thing now? Instead of yeah. saying, hey, look, yeah. this guy looks like uh, so, like just rock, right? We can actually say, okay, what does he do now? Right. Like, does he rap? Does he do this? Does he do that? It's like more expensive. Yeah, exactly. Know, so. We're we're in a we're in a phase now, and it actually took a quite a long time too for this to happen. Um, you even at the start of even the late '80s, you had the white rapper starting. Yeah, and it takes it to about 2010s, and now even the early 2020s. Now we're actually saying the early 2020s here, <laughs> yeah. where we're actually have to now we can discern what is his. Uh, Musical job title. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I like this. Uh, I like the Excuse fact me. that we were able to dig into this album. And just to piggyback off of him real quick. I mean, this is his first time hearing Mac, but this is yeah. like the moment where Mac mm. takes his pen further. I mean, Mac yeah. Adelic before his one. pen was in a right spot, yeah, but this feels it. like he was around the right people. He was around Earl right. and all them. And you can hear it. You can hear who he was with in a way. So, you know, as far as hearing how MC spit, it's just the way he brought images and metaphors together. Yeah. I couldn't believe he was doing it. Like, I wasn't going to give him credit on him. Mm -hmm. So I, I was hitchhiking on the freeway and then I just caught Mac Miller at the right time. Yeah, exactly. So, hey. <laughs> exactly. It's like, are you really good? It's like the survival commercial. Are you, right? are you, are you good <laughs> lyrically? Survival? Yeah. <laughs> are you Mac Miller? Yeah, get in. Do you like Mac Miller? Get in. I'm all like, no, it's like, but, it's like, I but I rap, but I spit. Okay, cool. So or this when is, he throws his keys on the table <laughs> when he's gambling, remember he's gambling his car, yeah. this pink slip or something. 
Yeah. <laughs> They're like, it's a Porsche. <laughs> Shall we uh, dig into the uh, the album cover? Yeah, well, before we get into it, I just wanted to like talk about like my first like... Um, oh, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, exchange yeah. With, with him. When, I, when he first came onto the game, he reminded me like of Benefit a little bit um, okay. or Alchemist, um, a little bit of like Slim Shady, uh, uh, but uh, like a skater type free spirit type mm-hmm. of vibe. Uh, and he also um, gave me... Uh, uh, give me that underground '90s boom bap type of feeling, like like when he on on kids, like that's where I, I kind of felt originally from that. Um, but his music was also like reminiscent of days, like you would go out, you know, and you'd skate with your friends, like after school or something, and you mm-hmm. would, you know, you would get into different things, and sometimes you might experience a run in with drugs or you know with with females, and and you learn about girls and learn about life. It has that feeling like his presence i think uh, anytime i saw mac miller in the early days in the early you know 2010s that's the like image or idea i got behind him yeah that's like the kind fun of fun like, guy like yeah like a fun and ho- some, some call music. it like yeah. frat party yeah music. like frat music basically yeah so that's like with well, the first kind of run i think the first track i heard um was the nike's on my feet mm-hmm. i make the cypher complete he did a sample of um nas on that track and it goes in on that on that track. Um, I like that 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 sound. Like I said, it, it kind of felt like a kind of happy go lucky, just underground hip hop, free carrying vibe that I liked. I, I guess it works for. I think Mac Miller was right on time. Yeah. So when you heard him, you you heard him right on time. I think I was just kind of like Mark, just really hard lyrically. We're we're writers, so we yeah. were just. I was looking for just something else. So that period of Mac Miller wasn't my favorite, yeah. but it is an era. Like you need that era to, to define what comes, which would be this period. Right. Right. Cause after this period, we're going to see another transition. He'll be like a whole different artist by yeah. the time, you know, he passes. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's different. What do, you, what do you guys think that really would separate Mac Miller apart though, from other like MCs in the game? Do you guys, he's what, what is writing, it? he's making albums. Yeah. This is an album. And, I was thinking about it with a bunch of other shit we were listening to. I was like, fuck, I, I just thought about it. It's like, these are some people are just putting songs together. Mm-hmm. Yep. What I mean by that is uh, for four minutes of a rap, you know, three sixteens and a hook and maybe a guest, right? <clears throat> right. This album I was listening, I was like, this feels like he really tried to build a world yeah. and, and really put it all together. It kind of felt a little like a psychological Deltron 3030. Like mm-hmm. it just felt like that's where it was going. Um, so yeah, as far as hearing him is just what I would pick from it is like he he compared to other white MCs and, and other people with production value from LA and stuff like that. Uh, he just really decided that the music will be the atmosphere, but I'm gonna give you a world like a story. You know, he's gonna really what I want to say is his depth is really really um, interesting in this album. There's so much depth before that party stuff to me is like a bright shallowness. And then this is like depth. He's going really deep compared to what he did before. So that's right. kind of what I was hearing compared to other rappers. Yeah. He just approaches punchlines different. Like he doesn't say I smoked weed. It's like the herb was ruled and I had it. Right. And he will say it that way. He kind of raps like Earl a little in, in some areas. He even raps like doom sometimes, mm-hmm. even on like uh, on SDS. He got some doom moments where he kind of does you know, die line, die line, die line, die line line. That sounds like doom for sure. So, yeah, there's those moments. Uh, but compared to other MCs, I feel like he really, he wasn't writing general shit. He was really trying to push his pen and other pens forward. You don't really hear that a lot. Yeah. The two things, the two things that you get off of this album is the, the risk. Yeah. A lot of lyrical risks that he took with it. There's also, uh, there's also the, it's very evident that he took a lot of, like he had a lot of musical range within as far as the production value of it. I enjoy the fact that in, in the, the beginning track, it sounds like the hum of a hovering UFO. Yeah. It just sounds like, yeah. I just got that sound. I was like, what the, like, is he landing and just yeah. coming to earth to, to bless us uh, non-lyrical earthlings or what? <laughs> Trying to figure that out. And it's, you, you only have that kind of trait when you explore over the horizon, like over those horizons where you feel barricaded, you know, mm-hmm. I, I believe that he took, took a lot of risks lyrically and that his musical range, this is the album for that, for both, for both those moments. And we, again, we caught him at the right time with this album. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. I, I, I don't look at him for like the extreme lyricism, but I do look to Mac Miller for like the vibe. I feel like Mac Miller more than more than the lyricism, it's more about like what are you feeling and what is he feeling, mm-hmm. 
and he he makes it he makes it um kind of uh, you set the tone it, yeah set he, the with atmosphere. the beat and with this lyrics he he gives you that feeling so you when you when you're listening to it i'm like feeling what he's feeling mm. um so he communicates i think best that way um but he's also somebody that um he can have a dark side or that perspective, but then also at the same time, there's a side to him that's like very, uh, like as far as like the music, musically, there's a side that's like, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, you know, but there's also that dark side. Um, and I think there's also a rawness about him that's very real. So like, even though the maybe he might not be the most, um, the most like elite lyricist, it almost doesn't matter because what he's spinning is authentic. What he's spitting is like real and that you can't, you can't deny. And then even his singing, like his singing, the same thing, even though he might not have like a, the best, you know, perfect voice to sing, mm. he still has that melodic sound and it's, it's real. It is real. So that like, you can't It's emotional, that. it's visceral. Yeah. And, and uh, I would give, this was like the moment I, excuse me, uh, I, I really felt like I was in experience, experiencing an art piece. Yeah. You know, so I felt like as a lyricist, uh, hearing him do these like lyrical backflips and tricks and exercises, I, I really was overwhelmed because I just didn't believe it. I was just like, the stuff I heard before just was kind of like, I'm not going to disrespect him. It's just like, I know where you're going to go with it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know where this bar is going. I know where this bar is going. I know where this bar is going. Where this one, I'm listening, I'm like, oh my God, he has... Um, He's done something that Cambada did with LSD, which is a lot of the songs have a dualistic nature. So he's talking about light and dark at the same time and putting it in uh, pause for yeah. this first song. You know, when we get to it, we'll talk more about this dualistic idea he's playing with. But even in his interviews, he's like, I'm, I was really trying to go further, you know, so I, I went so far into myself. I created another person, you know, which he, he made all these uh, made an Elias called uh, Delusional Thomas. Right. You know, so he has these different modes. As far as his range, like Mark mentioned, that's just something that I didn't expect from him. I, I didn't, and I feel like this is the album you can really go, I'm sorry. This is like the apology. You yeah. feel me? I caught him at the right time. Yeah, like, I was like, I'm see sorry, what this is all about. Like, yeah. oh, okay. I just, I doubted you, yeah. man. So this one, you know, and I feel like, yeah, it's like the polar opposite of the blue slide park because it's a red, you know, the red album, you know? Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting. It's like a, a complete turnover. Really good. Yeah, he's, what I've come to find is that he's a real creative junkie through and through, like, mm -hmm. That's that dude. Um, he takes you like on this like magic school bus down this like yeah. psychedelic journey sort of thing. That's like kind of his thing. So um, yeah, I think in that way it makes him unique as far as the rap game is concerned. Like that's what's I think unique to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, Go ahead. sorry. And then for the dustier sound and the the boom bappier yeah, yeah. sound, it's not dirty. It's almost cleaner. Yeah. I don't know how to put yeah. it in yeah. perspective, yeah. but it's but yeah, like it's you. not dusty. It's clean. Yeah, so you know, polish true. is really po important. Polish boom yeah. bap, polish yeah. clean, futuristic sounding shit. So that that's where I was coming from on this one. I didn't I know he had perfect. a show on MTV. Did you guys know that the most dopest no. family or something? Nah. That was a show. Nah, didn't watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nope. I think he had at least two seasons for sure. In between yeah, four hours of ridiculousness, <laughs> yeah. one slot was yeah. his show. There's like, there's just scenes of like it's all MTV is now. There's just scenes. Where he's like in the studio sometimes, and then like uh, Macklemore's actually there, like chilling. They're just him. He's like, made the best Mac wins, and they him, fight. Absol and Mac Miller. They're he's just the all three, Mac yeah, Mac chilling, Mac. talking about rhyming and stuff. And then there's this <clears> one <throat> guy that doesn't rap, and he's like, "Yeah, I know, I know what you guys mean." Like just a fly on the oh, wall. So yeah, I didn't even. <laughs> he's just agreeing. <laughs> he's just down yeah, talking about know. lyricisms. The <laughs> yeah. guy's like, "Yeah, psh. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, I feel you. Yeah, guys yeah. with the mop yeah, rhymes. Yeah, yeah I, I feel them rhymes, man. <laughs> you got to rhyme. Yeah." But yeah, Cat I, I, didn't do know, I didn't even know he was doing that. But I think, you know, there was a point in time in the early 2000s, you know, when he was getting hot, I guess, you know, just that schedule, that schedule is, you know, you don't really get to sleep. Yeah. It's one well, of those things. And then at that time, the the hottest rapper that had a, already had a show was Andy Milanakis. Yeah. I got bees <laughs> on my head, but don't call me a bee head. Oh, man, when are we going to break that, that verse down? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, Bruce Lee's on my head, but don't, don't call, call me a lee head. head. <laughs> But please excuse me. Dude. I got to get my tree fed. <laughs> you know what I mean? The whole, hey, Andy Milnakis had bars, bro. I forgot about that. You can't sleep on Andy, man. You can't <laughs> yeah, sleep totally on Andy. I forgot man. about that. Yeah, that was a real one. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to my man, Andy Milnakis. You came out man. aggressively spitting in that intro of the yeah. show. <laughs> I, I like how you, what you mentioned, though, uh, Dre, was about this album. You know, it's a great album, I think, 
you know, for for you, Mark, too, um, yeah. because this is like in the peak of his creative process. Yeah, you know, like um, they say that the album that kicked that off was uh, was it Macadelic? Was that yeah, Macadelic was that like kind of kicked off mm. that that um, journey that I guess you took his fan base on because mm. before that it was more. I don't know, just like that I sound kids that we were was saying, before. more like happy go lucky, like frat, like frat type of young party music. Sound. We'll just yeah. call it teen music, yeah, yeah. you know, teen vibe shit. And then he was touring like crazy, and and a maturity hit him on tour. But it had and then what's something funny happened. About that is it hit? It was commercially successful. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what's funny. And, you like, know, to take a to take a left turn after you know what you're putting out is successful. It's yeah. like very ballsy to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah creatively but it's that old experimental hip-hop album that a couple artists have and and this one actually works yeah Yeah. this one's the one that worked yeah this one's the one that worked. hard to get no it's because it's hard to do these kind of albums i don't think a lot of mcs today would put that much love and effort into an album nowadays and actually and actually this much effort and actually keep the experimental hip-hop album hip-hop yeah right Right. Like yeah, you yeah. should you should saw my face when the new danger came out. Most Def's new danger. I'm just listening. To it, I'm like, this is a lot of rock. <laughs> this is a lot of rock. But with with Mac in this instance, it's like it's, it's a perfect way, bro. Yeah. This is sequenced uh, perfectly, man. He got it together. Yeah. Man. Mm-hmm. The but album's organized excellent so well. grouping of music, hip hop. It has good singles, lyr- lyricism. It's, you know, yeah. that, it's all there. Yeah, it's all there. Um, all right, so let's get into the uh, artwork of the cover. Um, just I'm gonna just describe it for our listeners. Um, right away, you're gonna see a his bright penis. apple red. <laughs> his penis, his right bright, bright apple red. <laughs> the the background is bright apple red. Um, he's sitting at a wooden table. He's naked. Uh, there's a red apple on the table. Uh, there's a vase with some flowers uh, sitting in the middle of the table, which is like cut off on the left corner. And then there's a gold angel ornament hanging on the top right. Um, so that's basically what, you, and then he's naked and there's a parental advisory on his junk. On his junk, on his junk. <laughs> yeah. on his parental advisory on, on that. his microphone. The, the rest of the, the rest of the album is okay. Yeah. Well, this is the instance where the parental advisory actually serves a purpose. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like, that's, it's already, yeah. He already rapped yeah. son. Like, he already he, spitting bars, yeah. man. When you end up finding out the two life crew album, like uh-huh. the two life crew albums, parental advisory is like in the corner. But yeah. meanwhile, the two life crew are literally above chicks with just ginormous asses. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that uh, gold thing at the top was um, shout out to Ocarina of Time. You know the, sc- the golden skulltulas. <laughs> it probably is, man. Yeah. No, and Mac, like, man. The golden skulltulas yeah. that you used is. to have to collect. And this one definitely gives me those dark, twisted fantasy vibes. Well, that's what it's like. This sense of duality, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought the red was in relation to rebirth, maybe like mm-hmm. starting over, starting fresh, beginning again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the table to me is him giving. Uh, like having a seat at the table mm-hmm. and, and inviting you to the seat at the table. Uh, and he's naked because this album, he's going to be completely bare, like bearing his soul. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a dualistic nature to it. If you check out the right side of the image, it's like brighter. That's why you have the white flowers because the white flowers represent like growth and birth. Mm-hmm. Then on the left side, the shadow is darker. It's a bit darker on the True. left side. Yep, and the angel that. is supposed to protect him from the darkness. So right. it's like this dualistic image. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, the flowers represent the good. And then the other side with the angel represent the bad. That's sick. I didn't see so that. He's like OD on this one, man. He really tried on this album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I, and then, uh, oh, the, uh, the edited edition is there's a cover on the table covering right. him completely. Uh, but everything else is the same. And then the deluxe edition, for some reason, he puts the flower in front of his face. Um, or some other flower in front of his face, and I didn't, I didn't know any symbolism for that. I What's that. crazy is that it looks very simplistic. Yeah, but, but there there's are, so there's much layers. happening. Yeah, yeah there's so layers of what's going on here. Like, let's just start with the angel, for example, in the corner. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of different things that could be for that too. Like, when I see that, I'm seeing like fallen angel, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, maybe and even with the red background. Yeah, and maybe the temptation because he has an apple there, like <clears throat> right, the Garden right, of Eden, right. Like, the garden, yeah, the Garden of Eden. Oh, he's naked. Ha- I didn't even see that. Apple. Yeah, the apple's like, like, like right there. there. And he's yeah, naked right. too. So yeah. like the Garden of Eden, you started off naked yes. with the apple, right? Yes. And then there's even a tree that could be like the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That yeah. You know, okay. Creates. And the, so the angel is guarding and protecting him. From, or tempting him. And his snake is being blocked 
buy the parental advisory yeah, sticker. I didn't even so think about his, that. His serpent. <laughs> his serpent. His serpent. His serpent's <laughs> being blocked. His serpent's facing <laughs> temptation. Wow. Right. No, but I never. Okay, the apple connected to temptation with the yeah. tree of life on the yeah. side. That's fucking. Dope. That's crazy. I like that. That's, That's crazy. dope. But uh, or it could be like, or the angel can represent maybe just heavenly. Maybe this is just like heavenly. Or yeah, know. even just the angel being above everything else in there. Angel being over the actual, his shoulder. Just, why, do you, why do you think he chose red though? Right. Because I, I thought. I, I personally believe symbolically he just flipped from blue the Blue Slide oh, album. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because uh, the Blue Slide album was just like his his youth, and mm-hmm. it's like I don't know why. I know it probably isn't the theme, but this album feels like the complete opposite, opposite. of Blue Slide. It yeah. just feels That's on the too. other side of the wall, cool, hot, yeah. red, yeah, naturally, it's completely opposite. That's dope. Naturally, gets you more aggressive looking at this album. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like one of those. Yeah, uh, That's true. Blue Slide is fun, right? This right one now. is really introspective and kind of dark but i like the idea though he's nude and he's just like i'm gonna bear my soul essentially and even his face his emotions neutral it's not it, it's not sad it's not happy this is bare as yeah. all as all can be bare of uh of emotion bare literally right and if it was Damn, me, yeah, that I, apple, I would. Yeah. I would need two parental advisory stickers. So. <laughs> you needed, like, you needed. Uh, you'd have to have tilt it. Yeah. Have it <laughs> <laughs> no, he, what Andre would do is he'd actually elevate the shot to right. where it's like. <laughs> that way, people could just see it. I need more advisory, oh, son. So dope cover. I think. Uh, I think it's it's it reminds me of like um, Salvador uh, Dali, like that kind of like imagery. Just I don't know, but it, it's a dope cover though. It's amazing. Uh, so we're going to talk about three songs that we, we got into. Um, so three songs we got. We got Star Room is one of them. And then we got um, uh, I, am, I Am Who I Am. I am who I am. And the third one uh, we got is Red Dot. Red Dot. So hard. the Star Room um, explores the themes of fame, success, uh, consequences of living in the public eye. Um, Mac Miller reflects about his rise to fame and how it's affected his life and relationships. So he touches on those type of issues. Um, he touches on some drug use and pursuit of happiness. Uh, let's get into the, to the lyrics. So, okay. <laughs> it's, it's starting off with delusional Thomas, which is like this uh, alter ego he created. He has a whole album with delusional Thomas. Uh, it's just, you know, it's kind of like Quasimodo, just high pitched, weird vocal. Um, oh, that's and, dope. I didn't know he had a whole album. like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's and by the way, guys, we do have technology. So when we, <laughs> it looks like we're looking at our phones, we're looking at, we're researching. Sheets. I'm not so texting geez. someone. Lordy. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, delusional Th- Thomas. After, like you said, it feels like a, like a ship or something has come down. Yeah, and then the journey, the hum of the, yeah. Yeah. and then uh, we get the initial delusional Thomas introduction. But I just like to get right to Mac Miller's verse, right? Yeah. But me, I'm still trapped inside my head. It kind of feels like it's purgatory, right? So right off the bat, he's gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show y'all. Like he's gonna do left hand, right hand. I call that left hand, right hand. White, black, white, black. He's gonna do a lot of it. So he's he kind of feels like he's trapped in his head in the purgatory. So we already got the white and black concept. So polite and white, but got my family that would murder for me. So polite and white is the white play, and then I got family that'll murder for me. Black, the black white. play, yeah. right? So uh, think I'm living paradise. So what I have to worry about, right? So good and bad. Once again, he's just gonna do it back and forth. Dealing with these demons, feel the pressure, fit the perfect, find the perfect style. Make sure mom and dad are still somewhat in love, right? So he's not, I think he's talking about his actual parents, but he's also talking about God or maybe his connection to religion, right? God, mm-hmm. your mom and your dad are still your holy father and your holy mother, right? So still making sure that my mom and dad are mm-hmm. still somewhat in love, right? All these backfires of my experiments with drugs because they could be separating because he's doing so many drugs. So the goodness of the love of his parents being together can be destroyed by how much he's doing these drugs, how it fucks up his perspective, you know, and I experience a touch of my epiphany and color form difference between love and war and form me. I'm above the norm. Oh, by the way, Mac Miller's rhyming, rhyming like six, seven, seven syllables, sometimes 10, like for real full fledged all the way through with it, man. And I did not anticipate this shit. Like this shit just threw me off, man. But anyway, um, <clears throat> And I experienced a touch of my epiphany and color form difference between love and war and form me. I'm above the norm. So love and warm left and right. He's just going to do it the whole song. Give me anybody though. I'm gladly chew this face off than bath salts rhyming like it's summertime on asphalt have hot, uh, hot having picked a major label. Think I'm black ball because you know, he's doing this independent. Um, I still don't got the heart to pick my phone up when my dad calls. Will he recognize his son when he hears my voice? Right? So will my dad recognize it's me? Because he's actually kind of talking about being in that duality state, right? Yeah. So 
the perspective he has on here is like he's the light and the shadow at the same time. So if he called his dad, his dad wouldn't recognize him because he's a shadow. So yeah, there's just so many little layers here. I put this uh, put this music in my life. I think the, I fear my choice or fear the choice, and I don't know what I'm running from, but I'm running still. I conversate with acquaintances, but it's nothing real. So he makes it seem like everybody he interacts with isn't in a real world because he's still stuck in that purgatory. Uh, and this is just him stuck in that drug state. Like the drug state in this song is him jumping back and forth. It's like a cannabis state or Cambada even where, yeah. he, you know, Cambada always just talks about I'm high, but I'm low. <laughs> I'm sad, but I'm happy. You know, that kind of shit. I'm from a city that you hear and think a bunch of steel. So a hundred mils wouldn't make uh, me sign a fucking deal. <laughs> so a hundred mils. <laughs> Detroit, baby. Money kills. Oh, that's Pennsylvania. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Money kills. That's the truth. It's called the root of evil, but I want the Rolls Royce that the homie Lennon drove. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, John Lennon shit. Yeah. Uh, so, but also I think the connection to Lennon is like, I want to be yeah. like in the driver's seat of Lennon yeah. to be the I, best writer. What I like right away is just listening to these lyrics. I love, I love how he puts these pieces of real stuff that's going on in his life, but then he mixes it with like abstract imagination too. Yes. So it's a, it's a mixture of both like real life, but then his imagination. I love that. that. Like that it's, metaphor it's layer. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's so it's thick. It's a thick layer that we could really say we can read it. You could read this verse multiple ways, guys. So yeah. one way you could set your mindset and go, I'm going to read it as if he's on drugs right now, yeah. as high as he can be, and it'll sound a certain way. Or you could read it another way and say, I'm depressed after doing drugs. Yeah. So now you have to see like his vibe throughout the lyrics then. So you got to pick one vibe to be in to see what he's saying. Plus, if you're listening, little bits will pop out as he does it. I'm telling you, he has... I call it trust factor. So Mac Miller before he had like a pop trust factor. I don't fuck with nobody on that level. I don't even give him a chance. I don't break down the bars or nothing. Then uh, after a few opportunities, listen to his other shit. I was like, dude, he's got like Jay Z Drake level ideas. Okay. Like really up here shit, like really talented guy. Anyway. Uh, so if I just hate that he died, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if I don't talk about some money, I'm going to send you home unconventional, special, but unprofessional adolescent expression. That's letting me listen to this unconventional, special, but unprofessional adolescent expression. That's letting me letting me, me meet, meet these centerfolds. Damn. A decibel, a decibel yeah. above. <laughs> it sounded a lot like benefit. Exactly. Right That's a benefit like, shit. Yeah. I was like, oh, this sounds like benefit. I was like, hell but, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the delivery, though. He doesn't do the benefit choppy shit, right? No. He does this swung kind of drunk. He you, doesn't land accenting every syllable like some of these other guys. Yeah, you wish it's, it's almost like fumbling, uh, like, almost conversational. Yeah. Like he, he's it's, talking to you. It's like there's going to be so many football highlights that you can get where the <laughs> where the wide receivers like dancing and prancing from the twenty yard line on, and the free safety just knocks it out of his hand before he gets to the end of the yard uh, end to the touchdown. <laughs> I feel that Mac mm. Miller's one of his one of the critiques that I have from him is like. You read his lyric sheet. Let's go back to just, I'll even go to the intro. Cause even the intro, you still have the innocence, but you had lyricism. It's like, feel the, feel the surge energy curve, like a, like a lumbar, mm-hmm. the lumbar, the back of the lumbar energy surge, energy drink. Mm-hmm. I don't act hard. I still read Babar. Babar <laughs> the elephant. Kid, right. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. So it's like, you have these lyrics that can just supply so much delivery firepower with it, with, with the right, with the right MC. Yeah. But, but Mac Miller's in possession of it. No disrespect to him at all, but it's, it's like, like, I'm reading you, Mac Miller's lyrics. Yo, it's like, you wish, you know, he put a little bit more to it. Like, I honestly, like this is honestly speaking, like I wish he put a little bit more to it, but it's not his, that's not his MO. It's not it's his like MO throughout this whole thing. album. And right. it's like, he's taking, he's like, He's like white water rafting, but gondola style. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like slow pace. It's like he's he's making it feel like it's Venice. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like man, dude. Because look, look at unconventional, special, but, but unprofessional think, but see, Ado- adolescent think, expression that's letting me meet uh, these centerfolds. Because he's a young, beauty, good, bro. young looking man. He's beautiful. The structure, style, right. there's and it swag sounds to natural, it. man. As troubles fill my mind, capacity, I let him go. So he's still rhyming off of centerfolds, unconventional. Send you home, linen drove. He's still going. He's still rhyming off a of linen. The linen drove bar. Well, I was gonna say is that with what Andre mentioned though, like because you know, sucks that he passed because I felt like there was still more room to still. No, it's weird. He didn't go more still. into the rapidy rap shit though. He did. He did more. He did more than you anticipated. Right. Yeah. I'm not like I'm not a listen. I have high respect for Mac Miller's Absolutely, work. Absolutely, man. I can't say I'm a super fan. I can't say that. Mm-hmm. But the work that follows this, like Macadelic and up, I'm there. 
you know, yeah. as he transitions, he gets more into singing more into like uh, the divine feminine is, it's not really a rappy rap, rap, rap album. It's really for the women and it works. It, it hits you in a different way. And he understands who he's talking to mm -hmm. in this context is he's talking to himself, to us through the project. Mm -hmm. And it works even better that way. So later on, we're, this is kind of like, this isn't the peak of his lyricism, but I feel like his mindset for these tricks he's doing isn't going to continue. He's going to do other shit later. He's just going to do new tricks. Dude. But this shit right here. The first verse, like listening to this first verse, and I'm still trying to have my my lyrical objections, but dude, I'm I'm driving, I'm listening to it, I'm just like this. Like the, when, he, when he just pops off that first verse, he gets that smirk <laughs> from me. Dude, that beat that's, got me. That's the MC smirk. That's the hip hop smirk. If you, you pop a smirk off like that, dude, it's you, you, he's valid. He was like, as soon as I heard this, I was like, okay, cool. Like delivery style. That's not my, it's not my cup of tea. I wish it went harder, but Hey bro, it's like the lyrics are there. His okay. own delivery is there. His own authenticity. Own there. Is there, for, those, yeah. for you insane people, he's saying Max delivery is so laid. Like it's laid back and it's not, it's like chill, you know, compared to this massive world he's talking about. You feel me? Yeah. But I, I, I call that the Earl. Like Earl is rapping harder than what we would ever attempt to. And he sounds like he just woke up. It sounds like he didn't even want to do it. If I was Johnny Depp and Blow, I would let it snow, right? And I thought it was uh, him letting it snow like he would rather just you know get high and get away from it, mm -hmm. right? But to let it snow, I thought also was to distribute drugs. Distribute, so, yeah. Yeah. Distribute what he has here. So that's just me all wilding out and being extra, though. Tough. But I thought, okay, so I thought that was a reference to wilding out. <laughs> I thought that's me wilding out and being extra, though, because, uh -huh. yeah, but I don't know, I, like a joke. Mm -hmm. Um Shout out to Nick Cannon. Big yeah. movie fan. He always, <laughs> he always sends uh, drop-in movie uh, references. Oh, yeah, yeah man. He's, he's a nerd, man. Dude, he's anyone nerd. that drops Babar the Elephant. I think this is the first instance that we got Babar the Elephant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hard. I still read Babar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, second verse is just as good. I think the first yeah. verse for sure, though, it captures your attention. Yeah, And does. just the way the beat drops. Like, the first, like, I think four bars of the beat, I was like, what the fuck? What is, what is yeah, this? This is Mac nice. Miller? Yeah. I just didn't think he would pick that, you know? So it's kind of funny hearing the underdog version of the listening experience where it's like, I didn't, I wasn't going to give him a full chance and just listening and being blown away. Yeah. Um, and if God was a human, it'd be yours truly watching horror movies with some foreign groupies thinking this decor suits me, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking like, oh yeah, this is perfect for me. Um, I do drugs to get more loopy. So look where we are now, right? You, I thought on the second verse, you know, sometimes... First verse, you go all white. Second verse, you go all black. Third verse, you go gray, right? This one, he's still doing black and white the same exact way. So if he was, if, if God was a human, it'd be him, right? And then he's going to be in a horrible situation. Like, wait, uh, if, if God was a human, it'd be yours truly watching horror movies. The horror movie is just watching reality, right? Regular life. <laughs> Regular life as God is a horror movie, right? With some foreign groupies, you know? And a foreign groupie would be something from outside of his world, right? If God is from heaven, then he's got some devilish chicks. So with some foreign groupies thinking this decor suits me. I don't think he uses random rhymes. He knows what he's saying. I do drugs to get more loopy. I'm in tune to ancient jujitsu spirituals. It's more, it's blissful looking out as far as eyes can see. I'm glad that me and this elevation could finally meet. So he's talking about once again, being exalted and high, um, at like a blissful state. I'm glad that me and this elevation could finally meet. I think I'm JFK's final speech. Now, Mac Miller does a lot of references to dying, like a lot of them. And, and they're almost eerie how fucking uncanny they happen. Yeah. Um, they try, it's kind of like Pac and, and Big a little bit. Um, they try assassinating all my beliefs. Oh, wait, I think I'm JFK's final speech. They try assassinating all my b beliefs. So whisper to me for the peace of mind and be, uh, he be high some weed to grind on top of Jesus shrine. <laughs> and just that bar, just that bar alone, the JFK bar is mm -hmm. a hard bar. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, because that, you trying to that paints all such my beliefs. a big picture. That paints such trying a big Trying to assassinate picture. all of my beliefs. Just all because, you know, you grow up, you grow up, you know, being told certain things, certain beliefs, certain systems like this is the way and then you see a man like let's say jfk who you know who seems like the guy that's trying to do the right thing right gets assassinated yeah so it's like all that for what for you know? speaking his truth yeah, yeah. So speaking his truth it, and it, fighting it's for something. such a it's such a big bar right there they oh, for real, there's so much depth in this shit man uh twenty thousand on my watch because i needed time if y'all would just, you know, and then look, he got flex bars that work perfectly, man. If y'all would leave, uh, if y'all would leave me the fuck alone, that be divine. Yeah. Can't decide if, uh, if you like the fame three years ago to now, it's not the same. 
I'm looking out my window, ashen, ashen on the pain. Uh, should I wonder if I lost my way? Now, ashen on the pain, I don't know. He's just smoking, looking out the window, I guess, or ashen mm-hmm. on the pain. You know? Yeah. But uh, I, the last little bit is important, though, right? So verse three is very important to me. Yeah, don't you ever want to hide away? Poseidon triumph in the eyes of rain. Uh, won't give a fuck about tomorrow if I die today. I'll greet the devil with a smiling face. Shit, that God uh, fellow may reside in space. As times are wasting, I'm free basing with Freemasons. My girl switching the locks. The, the keys keep changing. Dreaming of places, my own personal creations. If there's a party in heaven, I plan to leave wasted. Dude, like literally he OD'd, bro. Like he literally called it. <laughs> so yeah, if, the, if there's a party in heaven, I plan to leave wasted. Retracing my steps back to biblical times, we all going to end up meeting at the finishing line. Because we all going to... Excuse me, because we all gonna die. Yeah, that was the uh, the one bar that I told you guys where he like that's deliberately from Bis, uh, free basin with Freemasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's was, fucking genius, man. But th- I think the homage to cannabis and everything that that shows me the depth of what he's trying to do. So he opens with delusional Thomas, and then he closes with delusional Thomas. So yeah, I thought that know, was pretty dope. And it also shows that he's you know fighting or facing his demons too. Like you feel that throughout this album, yeah. you can hear that he's you know he's yeah. facing those demons. And he's um, he's battling them, yes. you know. So I, I felt like that was Tough the most shit. At first, I when I first listened to, it, I'm like, dude, why are you why are you like basically selling out like to the devil? Like to me, that always His, is like that's something that doesn't um, that doesn't um, I don't like stuff like that. But yeah. um, but if I look at it, you know, just just objectively, like you, I can tell here what he's doing. He's actually just fighting with his demons inside all these dark thoughts that come to his mind for real. And he's just speaking them. I like mean, because he said, if there is if, if, if there is a God, it would be me watching this experience, right? Yeah. You know, and, and those kind of bars, that's the introspection that we kind of like to hear. Uh, but it's kind of the angle he does. I would call it, I don't want to, I don't want to sound white when I say this. <laughs> it's just like he has a different angle to talk about urban things. So it's like some street people just say certain things differently. Mm-hmm. Mac doesn't talk like a street dude. So he has a different way to get a street idea out. And that's how it sounds to me. He just, I like the decor suit me line so much because it's just like, that's a pimp line. Another yeah. nigga would just say, I'm getting my dick sucked. I'm God, right? Yeah. Him, he he just made it more interesting, more visceral, more, you know, it's like an image I get to watch, you know? It's, it's a tough spot to be in, to be in this uh, kind of position where you, your outlet to express how you feel inside. And this is self-doubt's evident. Oh, yeah. A lot of the stuff, it's... it's Drug paranoia. You're... <laughs> I, I tell this to people all the time, but you gotta be kind to yourself. And it's like, like when I, even in rapping, the best thing that you could do is even admit a positive perspective, even upon yourself, even if you write about yourself, that's just the best way you can go across. But doing, doing it in this instance, you could tell, I mean, like we can always do this hindsight 2020 stuff with gentlemen like Mac Miller and, and the like of uh, the, the people that pass before their time. But it's just, God, these these lyrics are somewhat of an answer key at some points with this, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> an answer key I like that. It's yeah, even with um, with something as deep as just like you can even look at uh, Poseidon triumph in the eyes of rain. You know, it's like is he the one that's crying or is the delusional Thomas crying? Like, where's the link between that? Yeah. You know, there's just. There's a there's a lot of evidence to all that, but damn, dude, it's it's still lyrically dense. It's still an expression of how he feels, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just the one. That's just it's what, one song. One, it's the first bro. track, bro. Yeah. It's the first track, and I, you know, that's my theory. First track matters. You have to have Got it. a crazy opener, or you at least have to have an opener that. Once you hear it, you will get a concept for yeah. the rest of this adventure you're going to be on. Homeboy came from above with the buzzing of the, you know, his spacecraft <laughs> and then just started And then he spitting. came through, stoned as can be, and then he's observing yeah. reality while doubting his position. But yeah, exceptional work for a first track. It just changed my whole pers- This That's the song that broke me for yeah, Mac yeah. Miller. Just the, the first four and the drums and, and like everything just boom the yeah. way that bass drop yeah. I said I don't believe this is real so uh yeah that experience was incredible um the next track we got is I am who I am but uh, honorable mention SDS uh somebody do something I keep, I keep saying SOS in my head <laughs> so yeah SDS I just I'm a big Flylo fan y'all y'all already know uh I love Flylo's work so I happened to hear the beat before I heard the song mm. so when I heard Mac rapping on the song 
I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, Philo got somebody on this beat? That's cool. I didn't know it was Mac. So I was just listening. I was like, damn, who the fuck is that? And it said Mac Miller, and I had a moment. I couldn't believe it. It was like, <laughs> no way it's Mac Miller. Like, I just wouldn't have gave him credit. So, yeah, SDS, I just, the beat. And then when I actually observed it and listened to it, it's very reminiscent of a Doom Earl track. It's like he's doing their moves. He's not sounding like them, but he's like rapping <laughs> off certain punches just like them. Yeah. The Dylon line is so Doom, it's perfect. A lot he's gonna, of his featured tracks are really dope. Like, yeah. Even the one with Earl's sweatshirt, like that one's sick that too. That one's too, that, that yeah. one's really nice. The one with, um, uh, who was it? Uh, yeah, Jay Electronica was actually pretty dope too. <sighs> Man. Okay, guys, our problem is we, we don't have time to do the whole album. Yeah, so yeah. we are we are forcing ourselves to jump down really, the three. Yeah, to to this album, there is we couldn't pick that that easy. Yeah. So you there's know, some good moments on there this are track. Incredible so. moments yeah. everywhere on this album. Jay yeah. Electronica surprised me. Uh and then the way it's set up on streaming services, they don't tell you Jay's on the song. So uh when I heard Jay, I was like, Oh, I forgot he's on this album. Fuck yeah. So yeah, really dope shit. But I am who am. I keep saying, oh, we'll say I am. Yeah, I was yeah, trying to like fill am, the rest right, of it. I'm just I, like, <laughs> I am who I am killing time. Uh, extraordinary. The beat is just fucking great. Great vibe. I just feel like I'm floating, man. I feel like I'm flying in the sky when I hear this one. Now, what do you guys, I wanted to ask you, um, because I was watching some of the music videos as well. Um, I think the first one I watched was watching movies, the music video for um, this album. Um, but even some other music videos, you know, there's a lot of like, um, I mean, there's a lot of plays to, you know, to the Bible and, you know, the devil and all those things. Like, what do you guys, do you guys just feel like that? Like, I, to me, when I hear that, I'm thinking like he's just in a that dark of a place where he's like talking about it. But is he using it for, to connect with people? Or is he, like, I don't, I don't know sometimes, like some rappers put it in there either um, just because I don't know if, if that's it's there's the theme. attention. No, there's yeah. The theme. yeah, there's instances like even if you look at the music, a perfect example of that where you see that kind of imagery and you're just like, why the hell is it there? On to the next one, Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason for any of that to be in there. Yeah. Like literally, <laughs> you look at the lyric sheet and then you see this the the, the Baphomet. You see a goat. <laughs> yeah. You see all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, what does this have to do with the, on to the next one? Like, see, it's, I'm trying to. I'm trying the, to I look at it Swiss like Swiss Beats did the yeah, beat and everything, yeah. and it's all black and white. And I'm like. Is it, the is way it? I look at it is, uh, you know, thematically in this game, I feel like every artist has arcs. Tyler, the creator, is my favorite person whose arcs stand out really loud. Yeah. Uh, Buster Rhymes' arcs stand out really loud. But Tyler, the creator, is Bastard, Goblin, Wolf. Bastard, he's just fucking horrible. Red album cover, by the way. Just blasphemous contents, horrible ideas. The album's not bad. It's just he's really dark, you know, something you didn't expect from a little kid, you know. Um, a 17 year old at a time, I think, or a 16 year old. Um, well, my question is like, why? Then, but wait, wait, why? hold on. Wait, <laughs> wait, I don't know. I just, but that was his first one. Bastard, he was just a maniac. And then the second album, Goblin, he just got darker. He just got yeah. darker, meaner to the point where he's killing his friends. He's like going wild. It's like an Eminem album. Then the third album, we go to Wolf, and it's like he's taking multiple versions of himself and then just making them attack each other. Like he just brought them all together at a camp. So when you watch him make this arc, you see we go from dark to really dark to suddenly light okay then after that he he has a whole new phase after cherry bomb where he just becomes a whole new person and then we go into this brighter version of tyler the creator which is the flower boy era and we got uh igor and it's just this whole nother version of him he's not evil anymore he's not murdering and raping women and shit like that he's actually really um an artist about his shit but you watch it it's just an arc so when i see mac miller he's doing his arc at the same time, almost doom did that. It's like two arcs at once. You got the good guy and the bad guy going at the same time. So on this album, I feel like he's doing a, like a, a little bit of both that darkness and the lightness is like, he, he found this perfect pocket to sit in the middle of. And I think that's what I like about him. He's not a light dude per se, because even in his interviews, he would say like, I, you know, I'm going through shit. Um, this album in particular, I felt like it's dark, but he's really going for light, though. He's like, I'm a light person. I'm just in a dark situation. I got to talk about it, you know? I believe he made this after a lot of touring, too. So after all that touring, I believe he had a certain feeling about it. So I believe he was able to channel his emotions and create this dualistic nature. But most artists, they, they either go super one direction, and then they'll come out the other direction. If you're super dark at the beginning, you will eventually be light out of nowhere. If you're super light at the beginning, you will eventually become dark. You can see it. It happens. But people that do both, I don't really know what their transition is, that you don't really get to... Like, does does Doom have transitional periods in his career? <laughs> he kind of still is the villain all the way through, right? Yeah. So Mac Miller, to me, he's got this uh, for, like, for Macadelic, this one, 
and uh, good AM, I, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of the same thread, you know? There was another one, Finity, uh, Feminine, something like that. Too. The Divine Feminine. Divine Divine Feminine. But Divine Feminine, Feminine, that was really beautiful. That, yeah. That's very beautiful. It's just you, love. <laughs> but this one is like guttural, and it's in, it's like really at the core of the soul. Um, but yeah, both of them at the same time, oh, that's a talent. Too, faces yeah. too. Yeah. Faces is great. Oh, I love Faces. Faces is fucking, whoa. All right, a, so yeah, but yeah, he's perfectly in that middle ground. He yeah, really is. There's a lot to... Do artists have responsibility to portray whatever people need to need to see? Or is it an instance where if we're going to nitpick, uh, well, if we're going to look at their music videos, then we also got to look at the lyrics. But then if we do that, the, if we put a microscope over the artists itself, then it becomes we're not accepting them as the artists at that point. Mm -hmm. But with, but I'm wondering too, is it yeah. like the artist thing or is it the industry planning that in there or like, so oh, that's what you ask. Well, yeah. You know oh, okay. Like, no, you know, well, like, okay. That, so the, remember that the artist is mo mainly the one that pays for the music video. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, but you can curate, you can speak to an artist to uh, curate the video. Right. Cause you know, Chad, Chad, he does that. Um, one of our homies, Chad, he does, he works on music videos. So his whole situation is you got to bring like, a, like um, the storyboard to the artist first. And they have to pick before they start the music video. So he's, he was talking about working on an artist with a, with a really big artist. And he gave him one of these cures. He was like, this is what I want for you. I want you to, you know, I think he said he wanted him in a casket and everything was a funeral and stuff like that. And he looked at that. He said, oh, fuck that. No, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want to be dead in a video. Give me something that matches my, my theory, like what I'm doing. Right. So he made a new one and they worked it out. And he was like, well, how about this? You're outside, happy, alive and not dying. He's like, yeah, I want that. Give me that. So it is up to the artist to pick what direction they go. But if I put you in my studio with my people, you got to deal with what we give you. So I think that's how it works. So if there's three different versions of the music video you're supposed to do, version number one is you got bitches and hoes and you're, you're in a Bentley. Number two, you're at, you're in the woods somewhere around a fire, right? right? And you're just at a fire having a good time, you know, rapping. <laughs> and the last one, you're at the mall acting a fool, right? You can pick which one you want to do, what direction you want to go and what represents that, that work you're doing. Uh, compared to somebody that just throws a music video on you, that's not good. Mm -hmm. Cause then you'll see it in the video. You'll see it in their body language. They don't, they look like they don't even want to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of the newer artists, you can see it. Like they look like they're scared of the women and shit. Like they yeah. look like they don't want to be there. So uh, to me, Mac, I feel like every bit of his artistry he's involved in, like he really tries to make sure that his vision is expressed. Yeah. So then we get to the, so then we can get to the idea of what Isaiah was saying is like, what constitutes what constitutes the idea of what he was trying to portray in the music video? Yeah, I guess like my question is, it's it's kind of like a little bit all over the place because one, I, I feel like he, you know, he's just being straight up real and these are real dark things that he really is thinking. Yeah. It's almost, you know, almost like a cry for help in a way, but it's like that dark, you know, um, maybe it's just, it's just straight up yeah. like that. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are a lot of times we see it a lot in hip hop. There's these like, drops of it everywhere like music videos and lyrics blah, blah, blah. so there's that aspect to it too um but i do know that you know the uh, religion it, it goes so far back that like it kind of ties to a lot of different things so it really communicates strong i mean we see it in movies a lot of times like the matrix you know uh, or star wars there's these movies that they base the foundation off of a story we know yeah, yeah. so i know that it communicates a lot stronger <laughs> or it makes you feel a lot more I see. because okay. of that. Yeah. Okay, so I, I don't you. know if it's because maybe that's just something that just, it works. I got you. you know? no. Can I clarify or, something for everybody who's listening yeah. to? So you're saying you believe that some of these guys actually get scripted arcs of what they would be doing in their career. Like you would be doing these kind of videos right now. Like, or your sound possibly. is going to be this. You're going to dress dark this possibly. year. Okay, I got possibly. you. Yeah, I believe that's, the, that's yeah. definitely real. But yeah. at the same time, when we look at someone like him, he, I think he's on his own lane. Yeah, it's similar to Chance the Rapper. Chance yeah. the Rapper is independent, and people swear to God he's signed. He's not. He, yeah. Chance has been independent his his whole run. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So when he came in, Chance came in uh, with Ten Days, and then he dropped uh, Acid Rap, and Acid Rap was his breakthrough. Right. You know, everybody loves Acid Rap. Guess, Acid Rap is dark. It's guess, not the most vivid, beautiful what, light. What and I would then, say is like some guys it feels planted, mm -hmm. but Mac Miller doesn't feel planted. He doesn't feel right. planted. Okay. Like like uh, Big L, it didn't feel planted. Yeah. That felt mm -hmm. like that was from him. Yeah. Same with Mac Miller, it feels like that's authentic. Yeah. And there's some though that it does feel planted, yeah. but it didn't feel that way when I listened to it. 
See yeah. Miller's right right now we're at the top of a ride called the slippery slope, brother. Yeah. It's just like yeah. you you want to you know you want to dissect a lot of what we're trying to get from either Mac Miller and then trying to figure out all this, but it's yeah. you know we already kind of have the answer in some respects. Yeah. Of what and it's it's unfortunate, but damn, he really put it he really put it on with this album. Yeah. But this you look you're right. I this, think the dark it, but the darkest I think Matt gets is faces, and then after faces he just brightens up, brightens I, up, real, brightens up real nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After that's really smiley shit. It's not I mean it's not the happiest music, but it's just it goes in a better direction. Um, a lot of the introspection is is uh, like us working through it. Another note, uh, Mac Miller also said, like, yeah, I wrote some really crazy shit, but it's up to y'all. I don't know what some of this, you, you guys got to do it. You know, right, you got to right. break it down. So some of the interpretations might be layered or some of it is just what he wanted to say and we have to do our own thing right, on it. Right. Um, but let's roll into I Am Who Am because <laughs> I think it's beautiful. It's just the beat is beautiful. The atmosphere is beautiful. Uh, I wouldn't consi- consider it a beautiful song, but just yeah. uh, the experience is beautiful. Yeah, he, he gets you to really start to, question things i think that's another thing about mac miller is he questions a lot of things yeah of what, I, what's being told yeah, he was like so a the, self-aware I, celebrity right he's self-aware like, superstar he's right like, <laughs> you know just like being in a tug of war of all these things like oh no chicks oh my gosh well how would how troublesome uh money how can yeah, i deal with this? access to so many so many things it's it's really i i hate to get on a soapbox about this crap but it's like it it's really unfortunate to like not to look at the perspective that you're in and to find a negative of it. Even if you're like pursuing your dreams, mm-hmm. that's the, it, it sucks to be in that position because there's nothing that you'll do that you'll accomplish that can soothe the wound of like what ended up getting you here in the first place. Yeah. This determination, that grit for you yeah. to get out of that place is like, it's That's maddening. what got you here, but then you're like still it's in a spot maddening. where it's like it's not enough. It's a maddening. I think we mentioned s- s- bits of that, like fighting the depression, even like from El's eye too, like you know, yeah. getting through that. It's like to be extraordinary and be underappreciated is kind of yeah. crazy too. And, yep. I mean, because the drug use to me, especially on Mac Miller's side, there's drug use for him to push his style and his sound further. I can see it, I yes. can hear it. Yeah. But there's also drug use to cope with the pain of being famous. Right. And, and that's you, all get, you get the problem of addiction too. Yeah. Because you, you, drugs, I mean, my brother said it, like every great artist you heard, Isaiah, they were on drugs. Yeah. Which is true. Like, no. you know, when we think of like a lot of the great <laughs> artists, the point. they yeah. took drugs to get to that crazy blissful level. And that's why his pen yeah. is like this. Yeah. I mean, I'm, but look, I'd never want to do that. I'm sorry. I, I always told myself, don't give the drugs more credit than the artist. You know, drugs are just helping the artist get to a level, right? We wouldn't say Jimi Hendrix doesn't exist Unless he's on drugs, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, because um, you can definitely get there being sober. Don't get me wrong. Oh, facts. You can definitely get there if you put in the effort and try. You know, drugs is like a little, it's like a Nas tank. Like, sure, it will take you like quickly maybe yeah. to that level, but you can get there. Don't yeah. think that you have to do the drugs to get there. You right. can get there sober. It's a lesson from my man, Zay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so but Delusional Thomas in the cut, right? So I on the, uh, we open up with Delusional I Thomas. I just think of Waterboy. That's why, guys, don't do drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> or Waterboy. Lawrence Taylor giving you a PSA not to do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> to my next point, don't do drugs. <laughs> so jacked up. I think I'm getting sick, been in this room, like I was hiding from something. All right, so the getting sick, I thought, you know, him being in the room, I thought him making his own world, getting stuck in it because he's always, you know, to himself can't really be out in the world naturally when you're this famous so i thought that might have played into this idea of him maybe trapping himself quarantining himself maybe um posing a question how many been empty and holding aggression close to depression open your eyes and just focus a second like uh, there's rhymes going on here (laughs) fuck a recession my brother uh my brother my mind is my weapon i'm letting it go loaded and pointing at negative energy telling me stop they telling me no your aura is something you ain't even sure of Explore the core of California. Whores got more to snore up. I've had a smorgasbord of pornographic thought. That's Ooh. a lot. The feeling coming after the shock. So I feel like it's just him in his mind, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and and that's really fun, right? He's just talking about the gears turning in his in his brain. Yep. Um, it's just introspection, if you will. Very good at that. Very, Very good, good at that, man. He's he's fucking fucking incredible, man. Um, Praise me, I'd rather you not, because it's driving me crazy. The fact that you pay me, amaze me. 
That's something I love. Wait, did, you know, that, for that, his raps though, right? Just the fact yeah. that y'all are even yeah, like, that, loving his dude. That bar gives me the um, Kurt Cobain cop of vibes, you know? Like, right, smell praise me. But no, because praise me, I'd rather you not because it's driving me crazy, right? Mm. So like, yeah, he doesn't want the Kurt Cobain. That's the, perfect. The fact that you pay me amaze me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. That's something that, I love. You come to the club searching for drugs, drunk, fucking sluts. God loves me. What if he does? What does it mean? You wasting away doing nothing. You fronting. Why aren't you chasing your dreams? Uh. All right. So the club, I thought you come to the club searching for drugs, drunk, fucking these sluts, right? Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, the club could represent the rap game. So you just came into the rap game doing everything, Ooh, doing what everybody yeah. does, right? Yeah. Um, or the club could be his state of mind, and right. I just see you and you like join you look, the club, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, God loves me, and what if he does? What is it? Uh, what does it mean? A lot of questioning these things. Yeah. You know, people are telling them yeah. God loves you. Okay, well, what does that mean? Exactly. You know, so he's questioning a lot of stuff. What he's being told. You wasting away, doing nothing. You front. Why aren't you chasing your dreams? Uh, you already said that. We wonder about life, but none of us willing to learn. We wonder about life, but none of us are willing to learn. So it's like we inquire, but we never mm -hmm. actually get the answer. The money we earn is something to burn. Why won't we? Why won't they give it? Uh, give me a turn. I'll feed the hungry and clothe the naked. You mistaken. The world is cold and it's lonely, ain't it? So it's like, give me the bread. I'll take care of the hard world. facts. Man. Hard facts, man. And it's, facts. It, we've been there. We've seen this. We felt this before. And then he predicts the Las Vegas Raiders showing up in Vegas. <laughs> says, when them high rollers homes in Vegas raided. With some home invasion. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Contamination, the place was plagued. We just saved the day. I waste away in a room spitting, spitting these raps. raps. Yahweh. Put, put the, the world, world in my hands. hands. I'm, I'm giving, giving it back. back. I love that. That's yep. a double line. And yep. I thought it was a double play on Yahweh. Like he's passing it Yahweh. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. You know. Oh, Nikki Ronda on here. Her voice is beautiful. She sounds excellent on here. I think Nikki Ronda was on a Flying Lotus, a few Flying Lotus projects, I think. Uh, Forfeit in the war, he lays his sword down and walks away. So forfeit in the war, that the, I thought the bout in his mind, right? Forfeit in the war, he lays his sword down. The sword is symbolic of thoughts. So he lays his sword down and walks away, grabs a 40 from the corner store, begins to contemplate, dealing with uh, death like he work in the morgue, absorbing <laughs> souls forgotten. So dealing with death, though, right? You know, personally, he's dealing with death. I guess, you know, I've, I've heard the idea that you, if you live in your mind, you die in your mind, right? Yeah. And so, then the absorbing souls forgotten, the cremation process, I would think that the you know you absorb the souls after mm. you cremate them. And still talking about the subject like of the that. morgue. So dealing with death, like he worked in the morgue, observing souls forgotten. He lost his way, staring down that barrel, thinking not today. So attempting to commit suicide. I like that. Uh, life so precious. Lord knows that life is so precious. Fight to the death till there's nobody left. Man, the patterns is nice too. I, I wish we yeah, could go in on the is, patterns more. There's nice. gonna be a Mac Miller breakdown. Actually, I I don't know which one it is though. I want to do SDS. But I, I really feel like I got to do the first track, man. I have to. It's just so deep. Anyway, um, I'm animalistic, instinctively thinking of getting ballistic. Be specific to those in control. We all statistics. Misogynistic with a twisted mind. I'm intertwined. My finger twitching. My finger my itching. Trigger. All I kill is time, right? <laughs> Bang. Uh, initial symptoms of schizophrenic behavior. The mind is like religion. Can't agree on who's the savior. So the schizophrenic, I mean, if he called himself God previously, right? And he's having schizophrenic behavior, he doesn't know what version of him that he is, right? right. So many plays, man. Um, the mind is, yeah, mind is like a religion. Can't find the, pick the savior. The newest flavor of superhero. I'm shooting lasers, except I'm cool with Vader and blowing up rooms that's full of strangers. <laughs> so he's the villain in this context, right? A news anchor the youth can relate to its nature. Because, of course, we're only going to listen to somebody like Miller if we want the kids to hear something. You a hater. I'll deal with you later. No, thank you. I'm just your neighbor. Please don't do me no favors. Really, though. <laughs> come on, homie. We major. I waste away in this room, spitting our routes. Yahweh put in their hands. I'm giving it back. God, man. And then, oh, the beat switch is nasty, oh, man. Yeah, the beat switch the is beat beautiful. Switch. It's so fucking good, man. It's just a good-ass song. Uh, and then, of course, we got just, you know, a little ramble at the end. But this joint is crazy, man. Like, this is one of those This is one of those situations where uh, the vibe of the song... This song feels really long, by the way. This shit yeah. feel like seven minutes long. I don't know why. I was in the car. I was just driving. I was like, damn, this song's still going. This shit's still going, man. Lord, this song feels long, but... Uh, there's just so much going on, man. The experience and he has a different it. rap flow. There's a lot more energy in this rap flow too. Oh yeah, of course. It's, another, uh, it's different. Yeah, style. this is where you get a little bit more. There's a little bit more um, uh, speed to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where it was like, okay, cool. Like I, this is the one of the track instances where I'm able to be like, okay, cool. He's he's getting to where I'm thinking like, 
where I think he can get to, like where I where I would uh, prefer to be, you know, like I get this is a good preview of that. Oh, yeah, that's fire, man. Yeah. yeah, this one this one's super dope. I love the vibe on this production, sexy man, and smorgasbord of pornographic <laughs> thought. <laughs> smorgasbord, that's good stuff. He, um, damn, he's he's freaking good. Yeah, man, he's an artist, and he's, bro. And he's man, give him his credit, man. Oh yeah, he's nice, yeah. man. And he's yeah. getting you to like. Nice. He's getting you to also believe in self, you yeah. know, as well. Uh, which is a cool positive thing. So in the midst of all this darkness, you have this positivity here, which is like, trust yourself. Like, you know, don't just always believe what you hear and like, trust, yeah. you know, trust your own gut and, and instinct. Question a lot of things too. He's like, God loves me. Yeah. And then what? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Damn. yeah. <laughs> but you know, when you're that, <laughs> out, what else, what does that mean? A lot of it feels like exalted, you know, high thought, you know, yeah. but I, I just do love that. I love that. You know, when he's able to go within, when he's way up there. Right. Um, well, we got net red dot music. So yeah, red yes. dot, red dot's crazy. It's, it's we got action Bronson. It's the boom bap I the, love. I mean, that shit heavy, baby. Yeah. That yeah. the drums on that shit is nice, man. Yeah. The groove on this shit is sexy. It's just yeah, beautiful song. And one of, once again, it's a, it's one of those moments where I don't believe I heard this shit and Mac Miller spit on it. It really doesn't sound like. Oh man, it's so disrespectful to say to like a Mac Miller fan. It's like, dude, I, I'm sorry. The first phase of Mac Miller almost fucked up this phase of Mac Miller for me. So when I hear it now, I'm like, damn, I don't believe he made this shit. Like, what? You fuck with this kind of sound? So anyway, uh, it's, it's really nice, man. I love this one. And then just to have Action Bronson on this bitch, man. And uh, just uh, wanted to mention again, uh, Object in the Mirror. I thought that one was actually a dope track. He's singing on that. Um, some people don't like the singing thing, but yeah. like to me, I thought it was just a dope vibe. Like, you know, there's a real emotions right there that you sing in, you know? And it's a gateway to the sound that we'll yeah. get later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get a really good version of that later. Yeah. And it's dope, too, because he even does these live, you know, musical things, like where he'll sing to a, or not, yeah, he'll sing to a live band. And it's it just, it makes it even that more, like, enjoyable or accessible. Like, it's just, it's dope to see him perform with the live band. It, he even did, like, a... The Tiny Desk. Uh, oh, yeah, Tiny Desk. Yeah, oh, yeah, the Tiny that. Desk concert. Thunder Cat yeah. on the bass. That um, one was dope. Definitely had some moments there where it was just like high plane of thought type moments on and doing it with the live band and instrumentation behind them. Vibe. A real yeah, vibe. Sick. I like how you say it, though. It's like you, you listen to Mac more for vibe than yeah. bars. And I guess I, I would personally say I guess it's the same for myself, but then when I really dive into the lyrics, I'm you like, see it. I need to learn how to write like that. That's, yeah. that's a good sign. If I'm listening to you and I'm like, I need to learn how to do that. I don't know what I, I don't know how to do that. I got to learn it. That's the whole lyricology experience. Yeah. But anyway, we yeah. on verse one, man, we got to get it. We got to get it. Red dot music, man. This one's just aggressive. The vibe is just perfect, man. Oh, and uh, just to talk about the red dot thing, um, you know, it, it, it talks about his experiences to the rap game, um, and their journey towards success. Uh, but the red dot, it's, it's like referencing, in my opinion, like like a, almost like a laser sight. You know, often you use in firearms, yeah. you know, where they have that red target on them. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of pressures and stuff that they're facing. So they almost kind of feel like, you know, there's just, just they're under this pressure, this intense pressure. It's like a metaphor almost. Oh, okay. I that got they're you. kind of going through. Yeah. So I thought, I thought red dot was something else, man. I really it could didn't know. be. Yeah. Because even in the first couple bars, it's. Oh, I think I can see I can see a fucking halo about to meet my maker. Maybe the glare of the red dot. Oh. Ooh, okay. Because the cause you know, it's like look at a be like a red uh JJ Abrams lens yeah, flare. Yeah. You know? Uh brought a double cup of Drano, some soda for the flavor. Mm. Drano in your cup isn't gonna get you a good experience. Right. <laughs> some soda for the flavor, uncontrollable behavior with some psycho psychopathic tendencies. Wait, okay, so uh, we'll, 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 let's talk about it. He brought the double cup of Drano, what, to drink? So he's going to drink Some the Drano? Some soda for so, the flavor. Right, but okay, so he's going to treat the Drano like soda and drink it? Uncontrollable mm -hmm. behavior yeah. with some psychopathic yeah, tendencies. Which explains, hey, Lonely this is what he brought it. With the bitches, yeah. he got special needs. Word to my denim fiends. I'm Kennedy yeah. on ecstasy. <laughs> okay, so I love everyone. Yeah. I'm Kennedy on ecstasy, so he loves Man. everyone. <laughs> or word to my denim fiends. I'm Kennedy on ecstasy. My flavor from the nature need an acre from a recipe. Damn. They got my soul, but I don't let them take the rest of me. My melody a little like Kenny, Kenny G's. G's. It's, it's heavenly. heavenly. <laughs> Wait, but what does Kenny G play? 
Sax. The sax. Okay, he plays yeah. the sax. All right. I thought that da- that flow right there or that bar is dangerous right there. I thought because if you shout, out, yeah, to, they shout got, out to the they got my soul, bars, but I don't let, wait. They, 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 they got, got the soul, soul, but I won't let them take, take the, the rest, rest of me. Of me. My melody, a little bar. like Kenny G's, is Helity. But so his his melody, his rhythm, who he is, right? Yeah. He's still God sent because his rhythm is heavenly, right? Yeah, it's still talking about his soul too. Yeah, 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 I like that. But then you know, I don't know if he's playing clever games with words, right? Because this is something Doom would do that we wouldn't get. He would be like my melody. A little like Kenny G's, it's heavenly. So it'd be like he's dead, like Kenny, and then G would be play on God and oh, heavenly. Oh, South Park Kenny, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? But That's but not, not in this context. But uh, but like Doom would do shit like that. Yeah. So let's see what this nigga doing though. And am I denim tailored? Me in action rapping. But what's the denim though? What's the denim? I don't know what the denim. Is. Denim. The denim Sewn but, together. Word to my denim. Uh, fiend. My denim fiends. I'm Kennedy on ecstasy. What is denim? denim? Hold on. Well, let's see what we got. Hold denim, on. Denim. 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 Den- oh, Kennedy denim jeans. <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> apparently. That is a thing? That's oh, so okay. stupid. See, I was thinking darker. I was thinking denim. Oh, was, yeah. There is Kennedy denim jeans. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got but, you. But my flavor for, from the nature need an acre from a recipe. Wait, my flavor from the nature. I like that. So my flavor, I'm so natural. Is this just a commercial? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a commercial. An advertisement on greatness? Advertisement my flavor on from the great nature. denim jeans from <laughs> Kennedy. Denim jeans. And my denim tailored, me in action rapping, uh, I'll be fucking with the fader, sipping mind eraser. Actually, we rapping the fuck out of it, talking money from you, gotta smack you out in public. So he's going into the, like, he's brossening around. He's just talking shit. Uh, you, the Republic, you the Republican government, abundance of substance, have a consumption to fuck a bitch with, the, with your banana, banana Republic, Republic fit, fit, go suck, suck a dick. Mm. <laughs> you the Republican government, abundance of substance, have a consumption to fuck a bitch with, with the banana, banana Republic, Republic fit, fit, go suck a dick, and, and your bitch, bitch looking, looking like Cousin It, the ugliest. Cousin It, bro. Yeah, that was sick, though. Shout out to Adam's family, yeah. man. But yeah, I love that, man. He's just calling out regular, you know, Joe Schmoes, man. But, uh, man. I got, said it must be the drugs that got, got me thinking, thinking crazy, crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> said it must said be the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I like the ad libs too in this. Oh, yeah, that was the vibe on this was crazy. Just wild, wild enough, enough to, to suck second. daddy's big. <laughs> <laughs> I said it must be the drug. Cadillac's to even make him say some yeah, yeah, shit yeah, like that. Yeah. It had to be the Cadillac's drugs to make him say that. Action and Bronson does a lot of, there's a lot of like cool, funny humor in here too. That's yeah, he's a yeah, goofball, action, action Bronson is the funny ghost face, huh? He's like, he's the dog. He, yeah, it's it's dope. Joy face, you know something? Better. Yeah, Cadillac <laughs> is getting really whipped. Uh, 185th uh, said it must be the drugs just, just for that sizzle. Gore Tex is case of the drizzle. drizzle. I said it must be the drugs. Uh, I said it must be the drugs that got us thinking crazy. Sh- it's it must <laughs> be the drugs looking up to the clouds <laughs> where the, the angels, angels sit. sit. Damn. I said it must be the drugs. They looking down, keeping watch till I'm dead. I said it must be the drugs. So how'd I get this red dot on my head? My head mm. must be the drugs. Okay, Ooh. so all right, he died. All right, well, okay, so the red dot is like in reference to them dying off of the drugs. Yeah. Then, Ooh. so you know, or yeah. when you have ego death, or when you die, is just when you completely forget yeah. everything that you are. <laughs> so yeah, I get it. The red dot could be in affiliation. Yo, with that. I don't perform unless the money's in my pocket first. <laughs> <laughs> After rap and take my people. Out. For octopus, Dude, yeah. starting off like that, I don't perform unless there's money in my pocket first. We all deserve price, this huh? dedication Shit. to the fam. Don't hold your hand out for nothing if you claim to be my man. Damn, Ooh. you see me peeling off a wit like your mother strip. <laughs> Blow, Blow your dice, dice roll them shits. Hit another trip. King crack. Shit, I'm on some shit. Fans are fucking hotter than the leather in the sixth in the summertime. Ooh. Understand, I'm only rhyming for the son of mine. Ah, and so, so my daughter can be a lawyer, lawyer and reap the, the spoils. Ooh. We eat the tuna. It's <laughs> suede <laughs> puma. <laughs> my <laughs> look is water. Jay Buner. Jay Buner used to uh, DH for the Yankees and the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> doggy. <Okay. laughs> doggy because some of us age sooner. I'm going, man. I still twisted rocking lizards from a strange, strange river. river. That line is sick right there. Forbidden jungle in the joint paper. Point shaver. I Check the that. bio. I fix a game between Kentucky and Miami of Ohio. <laughs> so I don't know why. So fix some random scandal. I just got to throw my scandal in, the in there jungle, real quick. The joint paper. What happened between Kentucky and Miami of Ohio? And I probably, I think that was probably a fixed game. I think, uh, uh, no, I'm thinking I that. I thought you knew. I was like. I know it was like. <laughs> fixed game, 1985. Nah, it was like, uh, I think there was a 30 for 30 on it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. crazy. 
All right, so then let me see. Um, just must be the drugs. You yeah, know, must be like the that. drugs again. Verse three, though. Uh, uh, bitch, I'm not enough. I'm hot as wasabi sauce and constantly oh. giving y'all a bit of this ambiance. Rhythmically, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Rhythmically, yeah. uh, Miller is completely on time, right? It's just the way he says the words that he slides off time, right? So every single word is right on beat. And it's every all of it's bracketed in like five, six syllable groups. But he swings everything he says, so he'll, he might roll off the bar line at the end. But this shit is nice, man. Very so, versatile, man. Yeah, very man. versatile, man. man. So, bitch, I'm not enough. I'm hot as wasabi sauce and constantly giving y'all a bit of this ambiance. I was a, I was a minor chasing after vagina. And none of my friends were fake, but none of my clothes designer. Mm. <laughs> Went from posted Went from on stoops, stoops to smoking on roofs. roofs. I came from that basement. Now look at this view. So I like that. I, like that. Yeah. I love that, man. So came from the basement on the roof now. So he's smoke. He's higher than high, right? Yeah. He's on the roof and he's high, making his money, blowing it all. Fuck what you did. Just show me results. Oh, Yo, that's dope right there too. That line. You got this woman. <laughs> Yo, I'm a six thirty five <laughs> dipper, fly motherfucker. <laughs> Leather to the foot. Horses, I led them to the brook. <laughs> he led the horses to, to the, the brook. brook. All easy. A little body of water, right? <laughs> That's cool, dog. Dog, I didn't know he was... Uh, He's coming up with a lot of Horse whisperer. Horse, horse whisperer yeah. bars real quick. Uh, horse whisperer. <laughs> horse whisperer. Horse uh, whisperer bars. <laughs> if you like to keep the chisel in the book, I see a line in the mirror when I look. Look, mm. I lose money, but I make it back. I keep it true. It ain't no motherfucking faking that. I get a fade and then I oh, fade, fade to, to black. black. Oh. I bet on the razorbacks. Oh. I hold on the multi colored flavored, flavored gap. Black. <laughs> so the multi. All right. So. <laughs> Multicolor flavored get yeah. it's flavored. This beat was perfect. For it's flavored. Oh this man, that's perfect. crazy. I got I the want, flavored get. I didn't know why I didn't take a action Bronson to be an equestrian talking about <laughs> leading horses to the brook. <laughs> That's to cool. The he imagine just this hard ass rubber taking a bunch of like a pony. Yeah, just, 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 just a horse, the, just in the pasture, just a little salt lick. Give him a little salt licking, <laughs> and then. um <laughs> Took it to the brick. Dude. That's and That's and then that dude loaded Lux just Yo, starts oh, ripping. No. Yeah. Loaded Lux Ma- handled this, man. Dog. He he uh, turned Mac un- Miller into Macintosh Miller with yes. yeah, like that was straight up. So like, unexpected. I was just like, whoa, what's going on here? And, this and dude is ripping. Like, bro, chill. For future, for future reference, <laughs> yeah. man, we gotta cover Loaded Lux some kind of yeah. way, man. We gotta cover him. He has an al- he has a joint album with Cambada. Oh, see, I have yeah. no, I had no clue about this dude at all. Oh, fuck. He's so I was like, the, who is this guy? He's one of the, he's, he's one of the coldest battle rappers we got, man. That was and, crazy. Uh, this one, this one's, it's just surprising. I didn't expect to hear it. Wow. I, I don't know why. I just never heard it. So when I heard, I was like, is that fucking loaded? Lux on the yeah, album going off at the end. Just like, easy Mac with his Mac with the cheesy raps. Who the fuck is Mac Miller? <laughs> this name says crack dealing trap nigga slash cap killer. You know what's funny? back with a black stripper. Ass thicker than a snack wrap, snicker too fat to snack zippers. You know what's funny? Is he's saying what the like, fuck is Mac Miller? I feel like he's saying a lot of things that, you know, like I kind of even thought, like things I even kind of thought wait, about this Mac is, Miller. Wait, like if crack, he said wait, this in front of Mac this Space, name, probably cried. Wait, but he yeah, said like, this exactly. name, like he's like, he looked at Mac Miller. This name says crack dealing trap nigga slash cap peeler back with a black stripper, ass thicker than a snap wrap snicker, <laughs> <laughs> than a snack wrap snicker, too fat to snap zippers. Sna- uh, yeah, because you can't, chocolate pudding you, on you the can't snack zip her up, right? Yeah. Uh, in half of, cause he's one of the nicest men. This dude's crazy. In half is what I'll do to Mac Miller. <laughs> Dog. That's sick. That's like the shake, most half, Shakespearean snap way. Is, in in half, half is what I'll do to Mac what Miller. I'll do with Mac Miller. Wow, that's sick. Cause after the snap zippers. So snap zippers yeah. in half is what I'll do to Mac Miller. That's now sick. my mind's track figured. The nigga who treats this yak richer than elixir taps liquor. <laughs> Wait, he who treats his yak richer than elixir taps liquor, then pass oh. till it goes around the room like his casket finna. Oh, you Mac Miller. The facts filtered in a snap picture. My man Jack ripped over Google like Jack the Ripper. Because he's playing off of cannabis. And he's rhyming off Mac Miller's name. So everything's just Mac. Right. Play, it's all a rhyme on Mac Miller. Uh, that's a battle rap thing. We just take your name and rhyme against you with your own name. You can definitely see the battle rap skills. Oh here. my <laughs> fucking god! It's like <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's like daylight. It's like Mike. Like it's like yeah. daylight. It's like daylight, man. It's just like dude. Like, I felt threatened listening yeah. to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yoo-hoo. I'm finna murder this brunette bitch. Get pumped like flat fixed to become a flat fixture. A rap figure that looked like you hacked Twitter. <laughs> 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 that's dope, right there. I'll show you, Beastie Boy. You can't Ooh. match a killer with that wigger. I'll rather I'd rather attack Tigger or Jack Thriller. Wow. He got track fillers for our album. If he had Jigger on an ad sticker, wouldn't go, go cat, cat litter, litter where I'm from. from. Oh, it, wait, wait. If you had Jigger on an ad sticker, wouldn't go cat. 
cat litter where I'm from, Malcolm. I I knock your thoughts off your balcony, King. <laughs> I knock your thoughts off your balcony. That's a reference to his track too about yes. something off the balcony or something like that. But then also because Malcolm Malcolm X got killed on the balcony. That too. Oh, so King? Malcolm, I'll King? knock your thoughts off your balcony, King. Oh, that's sick. You're yeah. from a home of funny bones, not like the quite the one I've known. <laughs> not quite like the one I've known. You look like before you punched in flows. Before you punched in flows, you were struck in blows. Bloody nose for your honey roll in the lunchroom getting your money stole oh, you were bullied you were bullies best, best day, day ever, ever with the with Nike, nikes on, on your feet, feet. Oh. coming through blue slide park i'm gonna rob this chump so <laughs> nikes on the feet like but i just yeah. picture a bully coming up to him like give me your shoes but kid. then calls him out he's gonna rob him at blue slide park like you will rob him on his album <laughs> i'm gonna rob this chump <laughs> i'm gonna rob this chump i'm gonna go to your album and rob you i'm gonna go to your blue slide park <laughs> I'm going to rob this chunk on a party on fifth Ave like he oh, Donald man. Trump Shoot. on a party on fifth Ave like he Donald Trump. <laughs> like he's God, Donald Trump. nigga, give me that shit. I liked you better, <laughs> I liked when, you better when you was easy Mac with the cheesy raps. raps. When you the, were the easy one you just Mac? called. No, cause he just called. Like, <laughs> cause that was his first, that was his first rap name. Yeah, that was his first rap easy name. Mac too is dope. I liked you more when you was easy, Mac. With the cheesy raps. Who the, the fuck is Mac Miller? Raps. Yeah, man. Shout Damn. out to... Hey, Loaded, don't get mad. Nigga, you shit. Your, your stuff hard to repeat. But yeah, Loaded Lux is incredible, man. I wish we could cover battles one oh, day. Oh, yeah, we will. We will. Man, that'd be cool. We will. But yeah, Loaded Lux, man, we'll cover that guy in the future. Pause. Really dope song. Really dope song. Yeah. Action Bronson does his shit. I, we got to find an album for action, man. I yeah. really haven't found anything that like I, I want to like talk yeah. about. I don't know on an album either. We'll we'll find it. We'll like find he got it. A, he got a lot of features I love yeah. and like tracks he just pops up on. But I haven't like there's not an album yeah, right now. He has head. time to make one. Yeah. So that's the, that's the logic. <laughs> yeah. He has time to make well, them. <laughs> if he can make it, he can make them. According to my calculations, we can get his album covered by the time we're about eighty. <laughs> 52 weeks, 52 <laughs> albums, 10 years, 520 albums, to, you know, and then 20 years, we could do uh, 1,040. Uh, wow. Oh, that's pretty good. We yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll cover all of rap. <laughs> welcome, all to of that's, rap. welcome to that's <laughs> hip hop. <laughs> that's all. That's hip hop. All hip hop cover. Sponsored by Ben Gay <laughs> and Panda Express <laughs> and uh, Centrum ben Silver. Gay. <laughs> ben Gay is the one we're sponsored by. <laughs> well, ben Gay. When we freestyle, we still like to emote and use our hands, but our wrists hurt sometimes. <laughs> so that's why we use Ben Gay. <laughs> and we could still rip a mic or two. Also sponsored by Banner Mattress. Stupid. <laughs> for the rest of your life. Make sure the sleep that you have isn't your last one. <laughs> Banner Mattress. <laughs> it might be ours when we do freaking That's Hip Hop in 2040. Yeah, that, That's Hip Hop Live in Brooklyn. Oh, man. You know what God. this album makes me think of? A new mattress. You know, you know what this is? <laughs> going to Jeez commercial. Louise. <laughs> I get a lot of great rest to this album. <clears throat> no, that's stupid. Oh, man. So, yeah, this, I mean, this was a really. Yeah. This made me cry. This is a dope album. From front to back, like all of it through was dope. There wasn't a track on here where I was just like, eh, all of it was was sick. The, especially yeah. the features too. And there was a lot of moments. over over fifteen songs, and, uh, barely any sketches, yeah. and all the tracks. Yeah, actually no really no filler, no good, fluff. Man. It's yeah. just yeah. straight straight meat, straight right. meat. Pause. Um, the good thing about this album, and and I say good thing because it's still gonna come with something else after. But it's like, damn, like you wish there was more projects that. Mm-hmm. Can come up after this. You yeah. know that there's an inevitable cease to all this, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, like artistically. And with a gentleman like this, you don't like seeing it because you could see, you could see where he was going with his range. You could see where he was going lyrically. Yeah. Um, Andre was mentioning that this, he actually, you know, strays away from this approach and, you know, deviates a little bit more artistically instead of just, like the the ideal rapper, or right? Just like party rap, like, Got like it. you know the frat rap stuff before really felt more oriented to friends and fan, like having yeah. fun, you know. Yeah. And, and it's not a lot of there's depth to his work. It's unique for what it sounds like, but uh, it's just he the depth isn't about the party. It's about what's going on here and how it affects the party. I think, and, yeah, and that's where we got it. It's before it was a lot of like adolescence type of stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like what you into, attention. Yeah, it's like yeah. attention music. If that right. makes sense, and so, that's what growth eventually you know inevitably does to all of us you know yeah. like our and then he starts getting deeper and starts touching on yeah. things like from going from this happy-go-lucky guy to now dealing with like depression and, and fame yeah. and drugs and like kind of de- working through that yeah and in lyrics 
when you hear lyrics like that, especially within this kind of album, hearing it from the artist himself, you get a little uneasy about it sometimes because then you see that the seeds are planted or not. I mean, just lyrically verbatim, they're there. Yeah. Whether or not we chose to like, you know, dig into it and think, Oh, yep. This is, you know, this is evidence right here where, you know, the struggles, this is evidence of all that. No, it's just, you just see the expression of someone's artistry, someone's thought, someone's lyricism, Mm -hmm. you know, and this is, a very peculiar canvas that Mac used to, to paint that artistry, you know, like it from, from start to finish the, the album choice, lyricism, guest spots, the diff, you know, even what we just uh, witnessed with loaded, loaded Lux, he's taking, he's allowing someone to destroy him, to destroy him. And he's okay with that. Oh, like fuck the red dot. He gets killed at the end by loaded Lux. Ah, oh, that's what it was. Loaded Lux. That's sick. sick. Loaded Lux is the guy with the red dot. That's Damn. That's sick. Oh, that's sick. Kills Mac at the end. No, that's, that's hip hop right there, though. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's no, that's good shit. That's, that's fire, good man. stuff. The, um, the I, and I also you can, like, yeah, you, could, t- you could, you know, you could spin this album a bunch of different ways, you know. I was just going to say, I like that. He, you know, it was very organic. A lot of his friends were just already around. So these features, even, it felt like they weren't just you know, acquaintances. It felt like these are his homies. Yeah. These are his friends. That's sorry. You know? that, that makes more sense than, you know, <laughs> so it was just, it was cool. Cause it flowed very organically and it felt natural. Uh, the, you could, you could hear the chemistry even like it was just that fluid in the, in the album. So it was, it was dope. Listen all the way through. Yeah. I never, I didn't even like got to really hear this at all when it first came out. So this Glad, is, man. it was cool. Yeah. Like getting to f- listen to this for the first time. We had to clear the weeds out of the, uh, yeah, <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, weeds we had to get out of the way just to end to up seeing see, this yeah. little this little oasis. Yeah, I'm glad I could show it to him. I mean, really, yeah. it, it's it's and kind of a. I was like, man, this might actually surprise him. This is something that I like the initial surprise of it. It just didn't seem like anything he would make. No disrespect. Even after Macadelic, I'm like, he has like a psychedelic roll into it. That's what Funkadelic with Mac, right? So Macadelic. Nice. But this one just, I don't know. He did more. He just did more to me. Yeah, he just yeah. elevated it. The production, immaculate, like, yeah. I'm sorry, production matters in this context. It does. It's just like, wow. I I mean, I felt like sounds were jumping out on me, man. It was really good. Yeah. And when you're... It felt really good. Like, And when your instrumentals are as wide as how Mac Miller has it within this album, you end up... You're able to play around a little bit more. And And even his style, he he had to adapt to certain beats, too, because there's beats that are different... I'm thinking of the, the Earl beat that Jones. Earl yeah, made with, for him. That was different. He had a different flow to that beat. Um, and then there's some beats that are go like harder that he's like matching that energy on in a way. So like, you know, I can see him adapting as well to the, to the instruments that he's getting, that he's being, um, that he's rapping on or spitting to. So all around pretty dope, uh, dope artist, um, Mac Miller, man. Uh, I think it was cool also that he took that like journey you know, and deviated from uh, that that path of that commercial success path that he could have, you know, stayed tr- stayed on. He could have went yeah. that way, but he decided to stay like true to himself and just create for the sake of creating something that he felt he yep. needed to do, which yeah. is cool. Um, I just, I, you know, the only thing is, I think that like, you know, when you get mixed up with, you know, drugs and stuff, I mean weed weed is like that gateway drug that like starts to lean into other things and then lean you, into other yeah. things. <laughs> and then you start to get um, into, you know, a lot of people fall into this is the addiction, you know, yeah. and you can't and it, get out of it, can't stop. And then you're now on this wild roller coaster. Um, trying to push yourself. That's the unfortunate the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate thing. We've seen it with a lot of rap artists. I mean, Eminem's even talked about it. Um, and his, uh, you know, getting over his drug, um, use. Um, but there's a lot of other artists that have actually experienced that as well. And, you know, artists dabble in that. Um, so that's something that is like, it's unfortunate to see, you know, rappers not being able, being able to ultimately overcome that and being able to write sober, because I definitely believe that you could get there, um, being sober. I think that that's, you know, I don't think that um, that's unattainable. I think you, yeah. whatever you lyrically want to get to, I think even off the jump, that. there was a, like, you're more sober than you are high when you initially start your artistry. Mm. Wow. It's just, <laughs> no, it's yeah. just, 
it's when it's when you feel that you know you get a you know it's the you go back to just you get the dopamine rush and then you want to just oh well coupled with writing it's really exhilarating and then you want more and right. more and then and more and Take then it, it just yeah, I more. mean granted if if Mac had a addictive personality that could have been way worse too I mean I don't know right no I don't have the 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 psych log on him but right. it's just you know maybe that could have just been that could have just actually been I have the psych log on him <laughs> let's look at it our right guest here. spot we have a uh, doctor <laughs> doctor Boskanovich here doctor Mantis Toboggan. <laughs> So it's, yeah. it's super unfortunate because we're all, you know, we got the hindsight looking at this album, looking at the gentleman as a whole, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, dude, like, I mean, if we're going to just address that elephant in the room, just reading lyrics that kind of go to a dark place and yeah. then you just know what happened to the gentleman, it's just unfortunate. And it's unfortunate that, um, you know, he didn't, uh win and overcome that battle yeah you know? to overcome it yeah i mean there was i think there were moments where he did for for me for term uh but you know i i, I feel like yeah he ultimately still kind of struggled with that yeah you know? it's, poet and that, it's poetic in that aspect in, in that yeah and then that aspect and that aspect it is very poetic because you're you know you're struggling you're like a struggling artist trying to get through these you know these these things that are in your way or obstacles that are mm -hmm. um you know uh, the barriers. Yeah. I think the biggest barrier that he might've been struggling with at the time was his touring yeah. and just, uh, yeah, exactly the overwhelming fame. Because <clears throat> when you, when you, that's what, another reason why you take drugs too, is to try to help you like cope with these things. And that's the unfortunate part is because of what's going on in his real life and the schedule and all that stuff. You know, he's wanting to probably hit, if, take a hit to, yeah, you know, to, to kind of get away from that. Well, and here's what I would detach. like to do. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, this is what I just want to do mentally with Mac is like, I'm not going to connect um, any of these moments to the fact that he's yeah. using drugs. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, it's just art, you know? Um, as far as the, the drug abuse is concerned, I'm not going to always put that at the forefront of what I'm hearing and what's going on. Right. Right. It's just, he died of an overdose. Shit happens, man. Right. It's really disturbing, but I don't think that all of like, we don't listen to Jimi Hendrix's music and go, it's about heroin. It's right. about heroin. Exactly. It's about heroin. Yeah. Right. It's, I don't think it's like that. It's, it's more, I think Mac Miller, when he's not out and about, he's at home alone with his studio set up and he's getting high as he wants to, and he's making all the music he wants to. I remember he was just talking about, he's like, sometimes I just lock myself in the studio and get lost in my own world. You have all this money and all these people just giving you drugs for free. He just ends up in his own world. So I remember him talking about that specifically, but the, the drug abuse to me doesn't feel related to him looking for better artistry. Mm -hmm. The drug abuse is related to his artistry, making him such a big figure. Right. I feel like, you know, that we'll cut to jazz musicians and it'll be like, he OD'd because mm -hmm. he couldn't get that sound right. You know? Yeah. And I don't want to make any assumptions on Mac. I don't think it was like he was looking for the next sound. It's more so, I you know, my environment's making yeah. me feel this way. I have to escape. Yeah, because like and tours and stuff and yeah. all those Man, different things. Yeah. We don't know what touring is like. That's real yeah. life. Nobody, <laughs> yeah. like for real, you know, we love the thrill of performing. We know what that feels like. <clears throat> but to tour constantly, I'm sure that takes a toll on somebody. Right, right. Like you don't even stop. Like, like you know, right. think of Tech Nine. Tech Nine tours like, the fucking year he <laughs> tours a year who tours for a yeah, year yeah, man yeah. so yeah uh yeah, you the, know that kind of shit but yeah. the cre the creativity is organic though right? yeah from, from since he was young like that yeah. was always there yeah if he put out i think his first what mixtape when i was 15 or so yeah uh, the dude was a self-made self position so there, yeah, he talent, knows man. guitar drums piano self-taught like this guy it's, it's in so his blood sick, it's in his blood so so this shit this shattered me man this one yeah. took me to the next yeah. level yeah it's a sick album so thanks, Dre, for the recommendation on this. It was a dope Ooh. listen. And yeah. if you guys haven't checked it out, we recommend to check out this album. Um, before we go, just going to uh, want to make a plug for a couple of things that we got going on. Um, first, Andre, he's doing the Lyricology 101 on YouTube. Um, I'm out. not sure what's the best way to find you. Or yeah, do they look it's weird. Or YouTube or it's almost like finding us here. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just go to YouTube, type in Lyricology 101 and Andre and you... Hopefully we'll you'll find see, my channel. You'll see his face. If you don't find my <laughs> channel, you know, good luck. You'll find him in a Where's Waldo's. Right. Yeah. You'll find <laughs> it, you know, 
You but, know what's uh, funny though? Some people do comment like, whoa, what? Shoot, it's Andre. Dude, what the heck? Dude. Y'all can't even find me. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I hate I, you dude, guys. I posted it one time in my stories. Like, yeah. Oh, is he, do, is he like, this is the instance where like there yeah. was, he he just took a gap between videos. Yeah. Oh, is he doing okay? I'm like, bro, he's chilling. He's like, chilling. We're, we're just like podcasting. Li- I was like, we're literally having a drink right now. Relax. <laughs> no, he's like, locked up in my basement. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes rights for me now. Like, is that what you want to hear? Like, what the heck? So Lyricology 101 on YouTube, Lyricology 101 on Instagram. And let me just say dope breakdowns. Like if you want to like, you yeah, want to really get into it, dude, this dude gets into it. Thorough. Dope breakdowns, man. So Thorough, it's, man. It's, it's, it's talent, talent, pure talent. Uh, we also got uh, Mark here who runs a side business. Uh, it's He's hustling up. Out there on the grind, like out at events, he's you know putting the plug yeah. in for pins. He got some dope, dope concepts and things that he got going on. Yeah, so come weird. make sure to support a, a organic Hispanic owned business. <laughs> um, okay. No, no, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm here. Um, it's just a, pa- it's a passion turned hobby turned to a business because I produce what I like. I, I enjoy making pins, video game inspired pins, pop culture inspired pins, and. Um, it's been a wild ride. We're almost at seven years, eight years. I've just been everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. You know, Houston, Chicago, New York. Yeah. And Portland. you know, you know, you got that thing. You got that backpack. That's probably plain and boring. You got that cap that <laughs> yeah, needs a little you flaunting shoes, on it. Yeah, you know, it's always something that needs a little pizzazz. <laughs> yeah. And make sure to go and, to. Elmo Mark got that. Pain. Mark got that nostalgia cooking too. Like yeah. every, you know, things that are throwback. People forgot. Pff, he got those a pin, so yeah. it's sick. Yeah. Check, Check it out. out the on Instagram at El Notorious Pin, or on uh, the World Wide Web at thenotoriouspin.com. Yeah. And uh, me, you can find me at the local library here. I'm uh, currently checking I read, out books. I read, I read to kids. I read at the local hospitals. This guy's always. Um, I'm at the uh, uh, Ch- no. uh, Charity Foundation Hospital. He, he, he doesn't get enough credit because he's the guy who brought that hip hop together. The story goes is that little by little he started planting these seeds of yeah. like, hey, you ever thought about doing podcasting again? Two weeks later, hey, you ever thought about doing like a a hip hop podcast together mm. three weeks later. If only it, you ever thought about doing a hip hop podcast with me, you and Andre together <laughs> talking about, <laughs> talking hip-hop about hip-hop albums? Albums? like he'll get, he'll Tennessee two step yeah, till yeah. he finally gets around the circle and week five. He's like, is the microphone good then, for you guys? And, and then, then the week like, <laughs> and then we're here doing it. Episode one. Yeah. And you know, the rest is history right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, share, yeah, uh, subscribe. Yeah, really important. I mean, we let, really appreciate it. Let us know what albums you want us to cover. Yeah, um, so also, great. every five episodes, we do what, and I've checked, no other hip-hop podcast that reviews hip-hop albums do. We freestyle at the end. And if they do, tell them to come battle us. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say all that. But um, Slaughterhouse, like, we got a podcast. Yeah, Slaughterhouse's a podcast? podcast battle? Show Button's podcast roll through? <laughs> we, uh, we freestyle at the end of every five episodes. Um, off the top, our freestyle is just improvisational. So we we it's, a, it's one of those things that keeps us sharp as MCs and just... We want to make sure to convey the idea to you guys that like, hey, we still Do love this. rap. I yeah, love, love rap from the aspect of understanding it, from still practicing it, from even doing songs here and there to yeah. and fro. Yeah, it's really important to keep up our freestyles, man. It's freestyling is it's legit. It's a magic art, man. Yeah. Hey, and for some rappers out there, you need to start freestyling. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Wait, my, you know, on that note. On that note. <laughs> If you drop the mic, y'all. Then drop a like. And drop a like. The yeah. MCs. Drop a mic. Drop a like. Yep. Amen. <laughs> I know. It feels like there's something else that got some new stuff. Now that. close our Bibles. <laughs> Do you think they said that? Now we will Amen. close our Bibles. <laughs> Amen. Close your Bibles. Hey, close them. Pull up. Just straight up. <laughs> wow. Next time I just bring the heater out. Just putting my address out there. Yeah, show up. up at this address. Yeah.